All right, so I'm trying out the new Give Beauty liquid lipstick. I don't know what it's called, but it's the red one. It's the her original recipe, I guess. So if you see it on my teeth, don't don't judge me. And I feel like it's a little shifty. So today is all about cream and liquid blushes. I have 37 blushes here in front of me, and I'm going to rank all 37 from worst to best. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it because it may be a long one. I went and retried all of these blushes. I did a full try on last night and today, trying these blushes again, just so that I was giving an accurate description of how they perform, just to be fair to the blushes themselves. I felt like a scientist. I sat there and took really detailed notes after applying each one, taking them off, reapplying. Some of them have sat in my collection and haven't gotten a lot of use lately, so I wanted to make sure that I really retested them so I was remembering correctly. So I kind of want to give you a little bit of information about what I look for in a blush and how I really ranked these. So number one is opaqueness or pigmentation. Two was how easy was it to apply? Number three was, was it a buildable formula? Number four, blendability. Number five was, are they long lasting? And finally, what is the finish? So it was really fun to rank all of these. It's very interesting to see how my opinions have changed when reapplying these after them sitting in my collection for a while, not getting a lot of use. I must have dirtied 36 sponges and five brushes doing this experiment with reapplication to make sure they're getting a fair shot at their ranking. I have all of my notes here, so if you you see me looking down it's reading my notes to remember exactly how each of these performed now I put them into three separate kind of not categories but they're definitely broken up into three parts because we're going worst from best here it's gonna be broken up to like the bottom category which was really easy to rank and then the middle category which was all the blushes in the middle that I like but aren't my absolute favorite and those were probably the hardest to rank and then the final category is the top blushes that are my absolute favorite. Those were also difficult to rank because I didn't want to be a liar <laughs> in any case. Sometimes I felt like, hmm, I like that one more or I like that one more. So a lot of these could be transposed. So let's get to ranking. There are 37 different types of blushes, so let's go. Coming in at the bottom is the M Cosmetics Serum Blush. So this is a pretty sheer coverage. I really don't like this applicator. I thought I would, but I have a hard time getting this little pump to pull any of the product out. And I get that it's a serum blush, but it remained sticky all day long, and I really just didn't like that. And it's so sheer that it took me a while to build it up to my desired pigmentation. And I don't mind if it's a sheer formula, but I don't like when it's so sheer, it's moving around on my face and it starts to become patchy. It is designed to be a sheer wash of color, um, but it's not really my thing. And honestly, it's just too sticky for me. It stays sticky on the cheeks, my hair gets in it. I don't like the way that it looks. It's, it's just really hard to remove. So it's really just not my favorite. I had my eye on this for a really long time because the packaging is really cute. So I just recently picked this up and I really dislike it. So it's coming in at number 37. And remember, uh, don't come for me. These are just my preferences. A lot of these bottom blushes are very popular blushes, but I've collected so many recently and like over time that I'm coming to like a lot of different formulas and there are a lot of blushes that are pushing these products out into the bottom. Next up, coming at number 36, is one from Rare Beauty. So this is one of the soft pinch blushes, liquid blushes, and this one is a matte formula or a matte finish. So this is really difficult to apply. It dries down so quickly that you can't move the product around so it stays exactly where you put it on your cheeks. And when you try and blend it out, it just becomes really patchy. And because it is a matte finish, it looks really flat on the cheeks. It just doesn't make your cheeks pop. Even kind of blending it out now, it's becoming patchy on the back of my hand. And the matte finish just really doesn't look flattering. It just looks really bad. And I don't like a product where when I put it on, I have to keep applying it because it's moving around so much. I don't like when it's a difficult application. So I did like this at one point, but I really don't like the matte finish. I really don't like how patchy it is, and I don't like how hard I have to work to get it 
it to sit on my face nicely. So that's the reason it came in at number 36. I'm like, where do I put these when I'm done? So coming in at number 35 is another one from Rare Beauty. This is also the Pinch Liquid Blush, but this one is the Radiant Finish. So this one takes a minute to dry down because it is a radiant finish, and it will transfer if you're not careful. It's much easier to apply than a, the matte finish one, so you have a little bit of extra time to work with it, but this one, again, can also be pretty patchy upon application, and it takes a little bit of extra work to even it out. But when you're using anything other than your fingers, like a brush or a sponge, when I'm trying to blend it out, it's starting to take off the product and move it elsewhere. I don't know if this is just because it's an extremely emollient formula and the sponge and the brush are just kind of sucking it up, but it's a little bit better than the matte finish because it takes a little bit more time to dry down, so it's a little bit easier to work with, but it's really just not my favorite applicator. It's not my favorite finish. It's just a little bit more difficult to work with than I prefer. Also, those used to rank really high, like much higher than they are now. I really liked those blushes for a really long time, so they're just moving down the ranking because I have so many more that I've tried recently that are just, in my opinion, better. All right, so next, coming in at number 34, this is a newer product and it's really popular. So I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I'm gonna have to give it to the Say Do Blush. It is a really sheer coverage. It has a radiant finish. It is called a Dew Blush after all, and I get that, but it takes a really long time to dry down or basically never dries down. That is the finish there. It's a very beautiful coverage, but once you start blending it in, it kind of starts to get a little patchy in the middle. It becomes very sheer on the cheeks. Again, like I said, I understand that it's a dew blush, but inevitably it just transfers on me, and it's just not enough coverage for my personal preferences. Usually when I'm applying this, I will dot it like three times. I will blend it out. I will dot again. I'll blend it out. I'll dot again. I'm having to dot it so many times to get it up to the the coverage that I like. It's just not something I like to work that hard to get to work for me. I really do want something that eventually dries down because I will inevitably touch it, transfer it everywhere, it'll just be a hot mess and that doesn't work for me. Next, coming in at 33, is the Fenty Freestyle. This is the Cheeks Out Cream Blush. So this one here, it has a radiant finish. It's not super opaque. It is slightly sheer, at least this shade is. As you can see, as I'm trying to blend it out, it's still a little patchy, which I don't really like, but you can kind of build this up to make it not patchy, but you have to work a little bit more with this one. And because it doesn't instantly dry down, it does transfer a bit if you touch it. And I don't necessarily love this shade, but again, that has nothing to do with it. At one point, I re really did like this, and I do like these shades more for fall than I do this time of year. All of my notes literally have blush like all over the pages. So next, coming in at 32, is another one from Rare Beauty. This one is the Melting Blush. So this one is also a shade that I don't really like anymore. I like this one better than her other ones, and I think it used to be the other way around, but this melting blush dries down to a semi-matte finish, which is one of the reasons that I kind of like this one. It's almost like a cream to powder formula, but it's, it's not as opaque as some of the other ones. It will sheer out more when you start blending it, and so you do have to build it up if you do like a good amount of blush. And it comes out a little bit patchy, so it takes me a little bit longer to put the sponge back in and keep dipping and keep reapplying until it comes out to that opaqueness or that pigmentation that I really like. And still, it's patchy. So it's almost like you have to put it exactly where you want it and not move it, because if you move it, it's just gonna move the product around your face. And I just don't like to work that hard when applying my blush. So most of these with Rare Beauty seem to come out a little bit patchy for me. And maybe that's because I'm not ex super experienced when it comes to applying liquid and cream products. But for me and my preferences, that's what I have found with these. Next, coming in at 31, again, probably a really popular formula. So I get it. I might be standing over in my own little corner here. But I'm going to have to give that to the ColourPop. This is the Super Shock Cheek. So this one... It's a nice formula, and it's easy to apply with a sponge, but it's not just radiant, it's metallic, it's shimmery. And this particular formula says pearlized. So I get that that is what they were going for with this particular blush. However, it emphasizes the texture on my cheeks so much, I didn't even know that I had that texture there. 
and I really don't like that. It is a long-lasting formula, but because it emphasizes the texture and it literally looks like a metallic cheek, I just don't like that finish. I don't like the way that looks. I have kind of a radiant finish blush on right now, and this is about as radiant as I like it. This one literally would be better for eyeshadow, and I know that's what this formula originally started as, but that's how pearlized, that's how metallic this is. So it's really just not my preference to have a really metallic finish. I really don't like the fact that it emphasizes all the texture on my cheeks, even texture that I don't even think that I really have. Like it's emphasizing things that really shouldn't even be texture. Like I know where my texture is, like not here, not normally anyway. So next coming in at number 30 is the Danessa Myricks Color Fix. So this one is the matte liquid pigment lip, cheek, and eye color. I only use this for the cheek. I have not used this on my eyes or my lips. I really, really liked this one at one point because of its longevity. It is one of the longest lasting that I have in my collection. I always have way too much product left over on the back of my hand. It is a matte finish, but it doesn't dry down so quickly that you don't have time to work with it. You have time to move this product around. It allows you to work with the formula and apply it to your cheeks, to the desired pigmentation that you want. It's extremely pigmented, so you have to like that and you have to use the smallest amount. I use the smallest amount for this swatch and look how far it goes. It's just, it lasts forever and ever. It is a pretty flat looking matte product on your cheek. It's almost like a stain. It really stains my cheeks. Even this swatch, I'll wipe it off for you, but it's gonna stain the back of my hand. It's so pigmented that it will literally sink into my pores. So this is what it looks like coming off. It's very difficult to remove, which is nice for longevity. So it does have that going for it. It's really pigmented. It's pretty easy to apply, but the matte finish makes it look really flat on your cheek, just extremely flat. So I did have to work really hard to get this off and I didn't have it on there very long, so it didn't really sink into my pores too much. But if you do leave it on for a long period of time, it will begin to sink into your pores and become hard to remove. And I found that out last night when I left this on my hand. So I would say the thing that I like least about this, that it is just a super flat finish on my face, which isn't super flattering. Okay, so the next group are gonna be the middle group. This one I said here was like the hardest to rank these in order because some of these can be transposed. It's very difficult to rank the ones in the middle because you like them about the same. So it was hard to say, well, I like this one more than the other one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. These ones are in the middle. Coming in at number 29 is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Beauty Light Wand. This used to be one of my favorite and I know that it's a really popular product and oftentimes can be out of stock. It works very similarly to the ColourPop formula in that it's a very metallic finish, very metallic, and it emphasizes all the texture on my cheeks. That is the only thing about this that I don't like is the finish. It is very pigmented, it's very opaque. One swipe is really all you need to apply it. It's easy, one swipe and you blend it out, it blends out great. It does take a minute to dry down and it is very long lasting. But it's so metallic, I do not wear a highlighter when I wear this blush. I have had compliments when wearing this blush by people that I work with and asked me if I got some sun <laughs> over the weekend. And no, it's just this really radiant blush. So I like it. I think that it serves a purpose and I see what Charlotte Tilbury was getting at when she created this product. Unfortunately, that texture on my cheeks is just so emphasized with this particular product because of the finish that it really just doesn't look good on me. So I had to put it at 29. It was at one point much higher and I really do like this formula and I like the way this feels in the application. I just don't like the way it looks on me. Coming in at number 28 is the Natasha Denona. This is the Love Cheek Duo. This is a cream blush and a powder highlighter. It is a very cute packaging. I love this packaging, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's probably why I bought it. This is a drier cream formula. I have had this a little while, so it has dried out some. It is a semi-matte finish, making it super easy to apply. It is a buildable formula for sure. I don't love this particular shade, but I didn't take that into consideration when, with, when doing this. So here is the swatch. It is a very cream to powder formula, so it makes it very easy to blend into the skin. It is not patchy at all. It's very nice. 
however it isn't the longest lasting it is like a satin matte finish you can kind of see that that cream to powder formula does that it's not quite as opaque as i would like but it is buildable it's just not my favorite formula in my collection so again nothing terrible with this just not my favorite and that's why it did come in at number 28. okay so next coming in at number 27 where is it here it is hello is the victoria beckham this is the cheeky posh stick so this is a harder stick formula it's not as emollient as some of my other stick formulas and i'll kind of show you like it tugs on my skin a little bit however a couple of swipes with this because it is pretty sheer coverage and if you kind of tap out the edges it actually is really all you need to kind of blend it in so it's easily blendable it's just not a super buildable formula it is a pretty sheer coverage um, and it does remain like tacky because it's like it's really sticky it does remain tacky for a while after you apply it which I've said is not my absolute favorite it is a semi radiant finish so it is nice like I said not extremely extremely buildable it is a pretty sheer formula sheer coverage when you blend it out but it is really easy to apply I usually have to swipe it about four times on my cheek and then tap out the edges to really get the opacity that I'm looking for and I may have said this already but it's not the longest lasting blush it is beautiful on the skin however but I prefer something that's a little bit more long lasting than this what number is this? So next, coming in at number 26 is the Westman Atelier. This is the Baby Cheeks Blush Stick. So this is a creamier formula than the Victoria Beckham, but it does take, again, about four swipes. Here, I'll show you how much creamier this is. It does take about four swipes to build up to the pigmentation that I like. It is a buildable formula in the way that the Victoria Beckham isn't. You can build this up to much more opacity than the uh, cheeky posh stick that Victoria Beckham has. It is a semi-radiant finish. It does move around a little bit when you're blending it in, so it's not the best with blendability, uh, but I do like the finish. It looks very pretty on the cheeks. I just don't really like how much I feel like I kind of have to build this particular product up. I just prefer the finish a little bit more and the pigmentation a little bit more than I do the Cheeky Posh Stick from Victoria Beckham. And it's a creamier formula, which is like nicer to apply to the cheeks. The Victoria Beckham one kind of like tugs at my cheeks when I'm applying it. And I will never take like an, a sponge or a brush applicator and tap the product. I will always take a stick formula and draw it onto my cheeks because I believe that is what they intended when they created this applicator. All right, so next coming in at number 25 is the Ritual Defeat Inner Glow Cream Pigment. So I believe this could probably be used for more than just your cheeks, but I use it as only blush. So this is a very light coverage. It's not super pigmented. It has a semi-radiant finish, but it is very natural looking. So here is it in the pan. It kind of looks a little scary, but once you put it on, it is a like natural kind of mauve toned blush. So I really do like that. It has a very, very strong like prickly pear scent to it or something along those lines not necessarily perfumey but definitely something in the ingredients is making it smell like that so it is a natural just light coverage and while i said you know i don't necessarily like sheer blushes that's not really true like if it's a natural finish that really just like is semi radiant on the cheeks just makes your cheeks pop and look really good it just complements them the way that it should it ranks a little bit higher so i like this one more than i like the other two um the scent could be a little bit strong for some people. I don't mind it, and I didn't find that it lingered too long, but it's really, really strong. My poor hand here. So coming in at number four is Alley Oop. This is the Stack the Odds. It is in the shade Sassy Pants. This is a trio that comes with a cream bronzer, blush, and highlighter. So this formula reminds me of the Natasha Denona. It's potted, but it also feels more like a cream to powder formula. So it's definitely harder. It's not extremely emollient, but it's extremely easy to apply. So here's the swatch. It's a pretty nice color. It is opaque. It does dry down pretty quickly and it has a semi radiant finish. So this is actually a very nice product. I've never heard of Alley Oop before, but when I got this in a boxy charm, it was just so nice. Every one of these products works really well and they basically perform all in the same way. So there's the um, cream highlighter and here is the cream bronzer. I like all of these. Again, they all have that kind of like 
cream to powder formula like a stiffer cream formula but they are very nice and they're very easy to work with so I liked this one I don't love it more than some of my other ones but it is not a bad one by any means Whew. I feel like my back is like gonna break in this chair so many blushes all right, so coming in at number 23 is the Color Me Cream Blush from Believe Beauties. So this is a Dollar General product. Dollar General? Dollar Store? I think it's a Dollar General. I can't remember. But this is extremely creamy formula. It has a radiant finish. It's very nice. One twirl of your brush in this product or one dip of your sponge is really all you need for the full application of this product. It is not really buildable. It's a pretty sheer formula, so you can continue to build it, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna give you too much opacity. It does take about five to 10 minutes to fully dry down, so it's not like the fastest drying formula ever, but it is a pretty creamy product, even in the pan here. It just looks beautiful on the skin. It's, the reason that it's probably ranked in the middle is because it wears off really quickly. It's not the longest lasting blush. And that's one of the first things I noticed about this product, the first, I don't know, four times that I tried this, is that it just kind of fades away pretty quickly throughout the day. And I like something that's a little bit more long lasting, but everything else about this blush I really do like, even the fact that it's a more sheer coverage. So coming in at number two is the Winky Lux Cheeky Rose Blush. This is in the shade Tea Time. So I originally bought this because the packaging was just adorable. Like who doesn't like a little rose? I mean, it's bulky and terrible to store, but it was just so cute and then I had to get it. It is not a super pigmented formula upon first application, but it's extremely buildable and it's really easy to apply even in the design that it's in. You might think that this makes it difficult to pick up, but it really doesn't because it's a pretty flat product when you get up close. I would say it kind of feels like a cream to powder formula. It is, like I said, not too hard to apply. It has a slight radiance to the skin. It just looks beautiful when it's applied. And it is actually a pretty long wearing, long lasting blush. I think the reason that it got ranked so low, not because it's a bad blush, but because honestly, it's not really super pigmented and you do have to continue to like build this product up to get it to a good opacity. Otherwise, it's a fantastic blush and it used to be one of my favorites. So next coming up at number 21, this is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush. So I did a video yesterday and I ranked this like higher or like as an honorable mention in my drugstore holy grails but it does come behind two others from the drugstore and i will tell you why so this has a pretty radiant finish it is buildable formula it is very easy to apply but it takes a while to dry down which i don't really love and so while it's drying down it does transfer a bit so i don't absolutely love that it is a pretty radiant finish and for drugstores it's up there i think there's only only two that rank higher but they are newer to me products so i haven't had a whole lot of time testing them but i absolutely love them can't call them really holy grails yet because it's not something that i've repurchased before and that i'll continue to repurchase but this one is number three for ranking in terms of drugstore blushes. So really nice, and as you can see, it's a very emollient formula. It just takes a while to dry down, so I cannot touch my cheeks until it's fully dried because it will transfer. But it is a nice finish, it is a nice blush. All right, so coming in at number 20 is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Blush. It is a pretty creamy stick formula, but it's pretty sheer. I do have to usually swipe four or five times to really get it to the opacity or pigmentation that I really like. So it does have a nice sheen to it. It is pretty blendable. It looks really good on the skin. It is just not a really super long lasting formula. So it is nice. It's just that I, I think I prefer something a little bit more pigmented than this. And so I do end up swiping like a ton of times on my cheeks just to build up the coverage. It's easily blendable, but um, you know, I wish it had a little bit more pigmentation and that it lasted a little bit longer. All right, so coming in at number 19 is the She Glam. This is the Glowing Up Skin Stick. So this is a harder stick formula, but I can swipe it just two times, tap out the edges on this little bad boy, and that's all the blending that you need. It doesn't require a lot of extra work to get this to look really good. I like that it's a medium 
kind of stick formula. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. It's, it's just easy to like really blend in and look good on your skin. It's not extremely buildable, but it's super easy to apply. It looks really good and it's a little bit higher ranking than the ABH, which performs very similarly and is very similar in color, mostly because it's a little bit easier to apply. I only have to use two swipes to get it to the opacity that I'm really looking for and it's a little bit longer lasting than the ABH one. So it's a good one. It's pretty similar to the ABH, just a couple of differences. Okay, one wet wipe down and 18 more to go. So coming in at number, what is this? 18 is the M Cosmetics So Soft Cheek Stick. So this is really soft, just like it says. You really only need one swipe of this and it gives you just the right amount of pigmentation. You can blend this out by literally stamping a brush around it and it blends without being patchy. It's just so creamy and beautiful. It is a semi-radiant finish, but it is a long lasting formula. It really does dry down after about five to 10 minutes and stays on the cheeks for a really long time. The pigmentation is fantastic and because it's so soft and it's very blendable, it's just a really easy to work with formula. So I really like that one. You know, of these stick blushes, they all kind of, except one, ranked very similarly, like in place, but M Cosmetics had to be higher because it's just so pigmented and easily blendable and like long lasting that it had to go above some of the other stick cheek products. Got it. Okay, so coming in at number 17 is the I'm Meme Pep Balms. So I believe this is a Korean brand. I did purchase this on Amazon. This does have a radiant finish, but it does dry down right away. It's a very interesting formula. It stays emollient just long enough to apply it onto your cheeks and move it around and then it instantly dries down after that. And you would think based on this formula and how quickly it dries down that it would be a matte finish, but it isn't. It is a super long lasting formula and it's just really easily blendable when you put it on. You almost feel like it would be difficult to work with, but I put it on the back of my hand. I kind of rub it in. I damp, a, like I put a sponge in it and I apply it to my cheeks and it doesn't look patchy. It's just a very unique product. I really do like this one. Okay, so coming in at number 16, this is the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush. So this is a harder cream formula. If I kind of let this product sit for a while and don't dig into it, I really kind of have to dig my brush or my sponge into here to really pick anything up. But it is super easy to blend. It is pigmented and it is a buildable formula. It's a satin matte finish. So it looks very satin on the cheeks. They just did a good job with the formula, calling it a satin matte. They weren't wrong. It lives up to its claims. It's just a very easy product to work with. It's getting to like the end of the ones that are in the middle for me. So it's not of my favorites, but it's a really good blush. And I think LYS, I think this is about $14 at Sephora. So it's a pretty affordable option for products that they sell at Sephora. So it is a good one. It's not my favorite, but it's a go-to. Like, it's it's very nice okay so that was it lys did rank at like the highest for the middle blushes this next group from 15 to 1 are of my top blushes and i lied before they were totally hard to like rank here not as hard as the middle category because some of those are just like yeah i like them you know i'll pick them up when i'm feeling like eh, i just want to grab for this one but they're not the ones that i'm going to grab for when i'm like i need something that's going to work perfectly coming in at number 15 is the Glossier Cloud Paint. A little bit with this goes a really long way, and even though it's in a squeezy tube, it is a very easy formula to apply. I can just blend it in, I can put it on the back of my hand, blend it in with my fingers, easily tap it onto my cheeks with my fingers, kind of, I'm twirling it around here, but I would pick up the product and just tap it on, on, onto my cheeks. It does dry down pretty quickly, so it's not a fussy formula. It has a semi-radiant finish. I'm trying to get close enough to the light. And it has a good amount of pigmentation. I don't have to like build this product up too much. I don't know that this is the longest wearing blush I have, but it is a really, really easy application. And this one is really nice. It's emollient without being too creamy or too slippy or whatever. So it's it's a good one. So coming in at number 14 was the Kaja Mochi Pop. This is the bouncy blendable blush. I'll show you this. It kind of comes with this 
plastic piece and then it comes off. So it's a semi radiant finish, but it's immediately dry upon application. There's no need for dry down time. It's not necessarily like a cream to powder formula. It's more like they describe it a bouncy formula than that. It is buildable. Um, it has a good amount of pigmentation like right away. It's easy to apply. It's a really long lasting blush. It just doesn't require a lot of extra finessing. Let me kind of twirl it around so you can see. It's just very nice, easy to work with, and it looks great on the cheeks. I don't know what made me pick this up. I think I was just in the store and saw it and thought I would try it. I don't think I saw anyone review this, but I really like that one. Nothing wrong with it at all. Came in at number 14. All right, so coming in at number 13 is the She Glam. This is the Color Bloom Liquid Blush. I really like this. I find it extremely easy to apply, and that's one of the things that ranks this so high. With these, what I do is I put three dots on my cheek, I take even a dense brush, I swipe it out twice, and it's completely done. It's fully blended in. It is so easy. It is a buildable formula, so if I wanted more pigmentation, I could dot it again, build it out without moving the product around. It does have a semi-radiant finish, but it dries down extremely quickly. It is just the, one of the most easiest to use products, blush liquid products in my collection. It is such a beautiful finish. It's just so easy. So I actually have come to really like this blush. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm looking down like the entire time and I feel bad, but I'm looking at you. So coming in at number 12 is the Laura Mercier. This is their cream cheek color. This is a very natural looking blush. It kind of feels like a cream to powder formula, but it's a little bit more emollient than that. It's not an extremely buildable formula, but it is extremely blendable. It's a pretty like sheer coverage. It doesn't have a whole lot of opacity, but it's so easy to apply and blend out. Because of this packaging, you can just twirl your sponge into it, dot it a couple of times on the cheek, and you're totally done. It will build up a little bit. It's very natural looking on the face. I have referred to this blush before as like just sophisticated. It is a kind of like a sophisticated, no hassle formula. It looks really good on the cheeks. Okay, so coming in at number 11, and this even surprised me because I had to revisit this product to remember just how good it was. One of the reasons I don't wear it that often is because of the shade, but the formula is fantastic. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the cream to powder blush stick. So this is so creamy. Two swipes and you blend it out with a brush. It's perfection. It is one of the most easiest, or it is the easiest stick formula blush that I have in my collection. It is so creamy, oh, fantastic. It is that cream to powder formula, um, but I still feel like it has like a satin finish to it. It's really just the perfect mix. Literally my notes here <laughs> say buildable and 100% blendable. Just so blendable and easy, like two swipes, one swipe of the brush and literally you're done. I, my notes literally say so good. So this is one that I really, really like. I have liked this since it came out. The biggest issue with it is that it's in a shade that's probably like too vibrant for me and my like everyday wear. Otherwise, I would wear this all the time. And I think when she came out with this one, I'm not even sure it's still available. Maybe it is. Maybe it's part of her permanent line. It's hard to tell with Jaclyn Cosmetics. But all of these blushes were, I think, pretty vibrant in this collection. So I picked one that I thought might work for me, but it's a little bit too vibrant. It's just that the formula is really, really good. Coming in at number 10 is the Jelly Dough Blusher from Holika Holika. This is actually another Korean brand, and I believe I purchased this on Amazon. It is like this potted formula and has this little puff applicator here. So it is extremely easy to apply. What I do is I take my dense brush in there and I just pick it up on the dense brush and then I put it on my cheeks, I stamp it in and it like a couple of times and it blends out like a dream. It has literally the perfect amount of pigmentation when you apply it. It's hard to see because it's kind of a light shade, but it's really, it's really opaque. It has a good amount of pigmentation, like I said. It's this satin finish, so it has like a little tiny bit of radiance, not too much. Um, but it's extremely long lasting. It's almost like this cream to powder, but it's more of like, I don't know, like a satin. How else do I describe it? But I love that it's really easy to apply. I go tap, 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 boom, boom. Oh, it's done. And I like that it dries down pretty quickly and it's a really long lasting blush. It's very pretty on the skin. 
All right, so coming in at number nine is the Tower 28. This is the Beach Please Tinted Balm. This one has a radiant finish. I don't know, maybe because it's a tinted balm, but it's extremely emollient. And for being this emollient and for being Tower 28, it is pretty opaque. Like it has a good amount of pigmentation, like even more than the Bronzino that they have in like the same packaging. It's way more pigmented than that one is. It remains a bit tacky, but it is just so beautiful on the skin that I honestly don't care. Like you'd think that might get lower points with me, but it really doesn't because it just looks so great on the skin. It's even buildable. Like I've swiped it a couple of times and it's becoming even more pigmented um, and it's not patchy at all. So the only downside to this blush, because it is so good, is that it is a little bit tacky and takes a while to dry down, but I just don't mind because it is such a beautiful looking blush on the cheeks. Okay, so coming in at number eight is the MAC Glow Play Blush. This feels like a cream to powder formula. Um, it is very buildable, but it's like kind of a sheen coverage. I really just like this. Like, I guess I really like that cream to powder finish. It just makes it extremely easy to apply. So it has a good amount of opacity, but like once you blend it out, it's kind of more sheer than some of my other ones. Even though it feels like that cream to powder formula, it still has like this semi radiant finish. It just isn't patchy. You can really build this up if you feel like it. I just like the way this looks on my cheeks. I would say that it's a fairly long lasting formula. It's just easy to work with. I think that like when they're in this potted format and they're kind of that cream to powder like formula, they're, they're really easy to apply. They're easy to dig into. And this one just happens to have like the right am amount of pigmentation and actually looks really good on the skin. Okay, so coming in at number seven is the She Glam Cheeky Color Jam. This is a potted blush. This is almost like a whipped mousse formula. So if you can see it like in the pot, it's just a very interesting like texture. It's a very interesting formula. You just dip your brush into it like one time and it's so creamy and so easily blendable and has a great amount of pigmentation. It's, it's like very no hassle. Like you don't have to build this up. It's like one swipe or one twist of your brush inside of the pot and immediately you can just swipe it onto your cheek and you're done. It looks like it has like a satin matte finish. It's just this mousse formula. So it's not overly radiant on the cheeks, but it's just so nice and so pigmented. It looks really good. It's not flat. It dries down very quickly when you blend it out and it's not sticky at all. It's almost like a stain on your cheeks. It's just really nice. It's really pigmented. It's a very, very comfortable formula on. It's not too heavy. And I just like that you twirl your brush in once, you swipe, and you're literally done. It's just the right amount of pigmentation for me. I think it's long lasting because it's almost like that stain. It's just a really, really nice blush. I was actually really surprised. I didn't try this right away, even though I did like a full face of She Glam makeup but I ended up trying it later after like the stick blush and then after the one that you apply with the puff applicator. And then I tried this one and I like this one the best. It is just one of the most unique ones in my collection. I don't think I have anything else that is really like this mousse formula. It is from the Sunday Picnic collection. So I don't know if this is really like part of their normal line if you can get this kind of moussey cream blush, but I'm so glad that I picked this up. It's just so nice. I really, really enjoy it. So coming in at number six, this is one of the ones that ranked higher than my honorable mentions for my drugstore holy grails and it comes from the drugstore. The reason that I didn't include it in that video was because it's a newer product to me and it's not something that's like become my holy grail just yet. Something that I know is like a tried and true product that I've repurchased more than once or in more than one shade. But coming in at number six is the new e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blush. So this one has a little bit of glitters in it but they are so fine that it just leaves this like glistening finish on the cheeks. It's not overly sparkly at all. It blends very easily. It's not an extremely like emollient formula. Like you do kind of have to dig in there a little bit, but see that like glisten? Oh, and it stays too. The glitters are just so fine that it's just this radiant finish on the skin. It blends so easily. You can really use any application method to put this on. Like sometimes I'll use a sponge and just put it in there. They also make the e.l.f. putty brushes that you can use with these and they're just dense enough to kind of twirl around and apply. And it, it really just picks up enough product that you can just put it on and you're done. It is a buildable formula, but I wouldn't say that it's like overly pigmented amount of coverage. Like it, it's a little bit sheer and it does not emphasize any of the texture on my face. So this is fast becoming one of my favorite blushes right now. 
So at number five is the Seraphine Botanicals. This is the Primrose and Cream Lip and Cheek Palette. So this can be used for the cheeks and lips. I have not used this for the lips. I have only used this for my cheeks. This is an extremely pigmented formula. It provides so much opaqueness and color, and it's just so easy to blend out with like a sponge or a brush. It really doesn't matter. You can use whatever application method you choose. It's semi-emollient, but it's not like too slippy or creamy a formula. It dries down to like a semi-matte finish. But the number one best thing about this product is that it lasts all day long. It lasts so long, it's probably my longest, besides the Janessa Myricks, which literally sinks into my pores, it's like my longest lasting cream blush in my collection. I think it's great. I love the finish. I love how easy it is to apply. I think the long lasting feature of this is really unique. I don't have anything else that's quite this long lasting. Never heard of Seraphine Botanicals before. Got this in a boxy charm, but it's, it's, it's number five. Like I love this blush. I think it is really, really good and somebody should be talking about it. Okay, so coming in at number four is the Honest Beauty. This is the Cream Cheek and Lip Color. This is another one that can be used for both, but I only use it for my cheeks. I don't use it for my lips. So this is in the new packaging, and this might be a reformulation. I'm not sure if she reformulated, but definitely it's new packaging. So this is amazingly easy to apply. This is a fairly newer product to me, but I've used it so many times now that I've had a really good chance to like test this out because I just loved it so much. It's so beautiful. It's super emollient, super creamy, but it has the right amount of opaqueness or pigmentation, just the right amount. It's so perfect. It is so easy to like blend onto your cheeks. Again, it's kind of one of those where you can apply it to your fingers and just kind of tap it out and you're like completely done. It's not instantly drying, but it does have this like semi radiant finish when it's all blended out that is just so beautiful on the cheeks. It is a pretty long lasting blush. It just has such an amazing finish to it. I really, really like this one. So coming in at number three and my top drugstore cream blush, this is actually a liquid, not a cream, is the Creme Shop. This is the Trey Cheek Liquid Blush. This is a cushion blush and I have used this so many times it's nearly empty but it is such a unique formula and super easy to apply even though it's a liquid blush with a cushion applicator it has a tack to it that makes it stay so long on the skin the number one thing I noticed about this product when I purchased it was how long lasting it was it lasts all day it lasts through a nap it doesn't transfer on my cheek it's almost like it stains it but it's not as matte as the Danessa Myricks, which I know actually stains my cheeks because it like really sinks into the skin. This has a more radiant finish to it, so it doesn't sink in quite as much into my skin, but it almost feels like a cream to powder formula. It's just so nice. I mean, it doesn't get patchy. I literally put a dense brush into the pan. I apply it to my cheeks by tapping a couple of times and I'm done. It is pretty buildable, but mostly it's blendable, super long lasting, easy to use product, looks beautiful on the cheeks. I don't have anything else like this. And this is a drugstore holy grail for me. I love it. And even when testing all 37 other, 36 other blushes that I have, this still ranked at the top drugstore blush and number three in my collection. Like if they're still making this and you're in like a CVS or a Walgreens or whatever your local drugstore is, I would try this out if you're a liquid or cream blush lover. All right, so the next one I think is absolutely underrated. I don't hear anyone talking about this and it could be that I'm just living in a giant hole, who knows. But this is the Stila. This is the Convertible Color Dual Lip and Cheek Cream. Again, I do not use this for my lips, but I use this for my cheeks only. This seems like a, such an underrated product in a market where we have a ton of cream and like liquid blushes. I don't see anyone talking about this. It is extremely pigmented. It's so blendable. This is one of the like quickest application blushes that I have. I literally dip my brush in, I tap it. It takes me one and a half seconds to apply this blush. And it has this like radiant, semi-radiant, I keep saying semi-radiant, if they're not all fully radiant, like the Say Do blushes, but they have a sheen to them, even though they do dry down. So that's what I mean by semi-radiant. And honestly, it takes a little bit of time for this to dry down, and I don't mind it, because it's just so easy to apply. It is really pigmented. It does eventually dry down. It is one of the easiest blendable, like, lip 
cream cheek formulas that I have and the pigmentation is great. It just looks so beautiful on the skin. It's number two. I love it. I wish more people talked about this. Um, Steel has lost a lot of its traction I think in the market but I think Nordstrom was having a sale so I picked this up and I was like all into like oh I need to try more cream blushes. So I purchased this. This is number two. Again totally underrated product in my opinion. Okay, so for the grand finale, coming in at number one, this is a blush that's newer to my collection, but it is my favorite right now. It is the Melt Cosmetics Blush Cream Blush Light. I got this in two shades. I have one in Pink Sand, and then I also have one in Honey Thief. These are beautiful, beautiful blushes. They are great colors. They are pretty emollient in the pan. They do have a radiant finish, but it's extremely buildable formula. It's almost like it's a cream to powder, but every other one that feels like this cream to powder finish is not as emollient in my collection. It's just so beautiful. It's again, very similar to Stila in that you put the brush or sponge in once, you tap it out a couple of times and you are completely done. No extra blending, no fuss, lasts a good amount of time. I think these last longer than the Stila blushes. They remain with like a radiant finish on the skin. They are so beautiful. They are so pretty on the skin. They do take a little bit of time to like dry down, but it is the blush that I am wearing today. I think I am wearing the pink sand shade today, but it is just radiant and beautiful. I mean, I do have highlighter on, but like right here, like the rest of this is just the blush and it is so pretty on the skin. These are a tremendous formula. Like I've only seen a couple of people talk about this and I think they've released like last year. So I wasn't really like into cream blushes as much last year as I am now. But these are a tremendous formula. These are so good. I would consider buying like all the shades that they have that I like because I love this formula so much. So that is it. That is all 37 of my liquid and cream blushes. I am done. I hope you stuck with me till the end. That would be awesome if you would like leave a comment and let me know which of these you tried, which is your really holy grail, which one's your favorite. If you disagree with any of my rankings, if you agree with any of my rankings or just any comment in general would be fantastic. I hope you like this video. I hope you consider subscribing to my new channel. I have really been enjoying doing this. So I hope you stick around and do it with me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.